So growers have been asking, and this Tobacco University video will provide the answer for how to go about properly testing and screening for hop latent viroid in cannabis plants. All right, let's go over the testing and screening protocol for hop latent viroid. So first off, this is another great resource to kind of look at, provide a link in the description under references and we're excited if you want to go to this um, podcast interview style um, information there. I'm going to provide a summary of this as well as some other resources. So leaves was the standard. Uh, when we're looking at taking a sample, take the leaves. And this does still work. So I want to think that that was null and void, does still work. Petioles of the leaf, which again is this kind of portion right here, are slightly better um, than the actual just leaf portions there. So when I get really specific, just those actual portions there that's from the node to the leaves, that petiole is probably the better portion of the leaf. However, the latest data does indicate an early accumulation in the roots before it saturates the plant and will show up with reliability in the leaves and uh, throughout the plant. And as this kind of shows here on the uh, diagram, here we see the success rate. You know, we're still seeing, you know, upper success rates in older growth petioles, upper clone stem, but look at those upper and lower root areas, near 100% there. So particularly in early areas, um, if you can send a root sample to your uh, standard testing lab, might be worthwhile, because it does seem to accumulate at least early on there in a high degree. Now, mother plants, if you're talking two months or older, four leaf or petiole samples at different areas of the plant can work. Systematic sampling throughout the canopy should be performed. Root samples can be hard to get and do physical damage, so leaf and petioles are preferred for this stage of plant development, uh, not only to reduce the damage, but also because at this point, two months or older, probably got very good saturation throughout the plant. It takes about six weeks for that hop latent virus based on the research I've seen to kind of saturate that plant and to kind of become systemically over the entire plant. So at this point, if you have that plant that's over two months old, a leaf or definitely a petiole sample, uh, can, leaf including the petiole would be advised because usually you have more roots to worry about, might be doing more physical damage, and you're still going to get a reliable result. In contrast, if you have a two month or younger uh, plant, this is where you wanna go and target a root sample. This is because the early accumulation is in this location. The viroid load, load will be uh, elevated, improving the odds for detection on a younger plant. And typically younger plants, easier to get at the roots. There might be less of them in total, but easier to get at them, easier to get a sample, and it's gonna provide you with a more accurate result. Now, how often should you be doing this? What frequency? Well, if you're gonna keep uh, and or clone the plant, that's something to consider. The ideal window is about every two to four weeks to ensure continual screening to catch something early. Just because a plant tests negative, it may be below detectable levels or it might be a very small viral load, particularly early on. We get to flowering, that is where you can kind of see this viroid, that plant stress and that viroid become uh, more prevalent. Two weeks is best for actively growing plants, four weeks best for established plants as long as there are strict uh, quarantine protocols um, in place and you're limiting access particularly to your mother plants or your mother room. Now that plant quarantine, this is if you bring plants in, there should be at least a 30-day quarantine to allow for proper evaluation and screening. You might want to take a screen sample when it first comes in and then send another sample off even after that initial one. This may require those multiple screenings to ensure the plants are clean and are brought in as to part of the growing operation. The last thing you want to do is take one plant that's infected, bring it into your operation, and have it go through and infect your entire operation. Good month, 30 days, is a good quarantine period. Now, if you get a positive, uh, isolate the plant, remove it. Uh, full plant tag, bag, and dispose is advised. And when you kind of put that bag over, you want to limit your own contact with it, cover over, basically seal it up, put it all in the bag, and then discard it to the uh, for this dumpster. Remember, this is transmitted by physical damage and, tra and sap transfer. So when you are transferring it into the bag, you want to eliminate any contact you do have with that. If you're wearing gloves, put those gloves in the bag and discard of everything together. Also, the roots can have some of the highest uh, viroid loads, so avoid transfer or contact with these as well. A lot of people just think of the plant, the petiole, yes, but the roots as well, the substrate they're growing, and you definitely want to be treating that um, because that is where some of the highest amount of viroids can be located. So you want to be treating that with diligent care and making sure you're disposing of that as well with your plant.